In order for our collective reality to experience specific timelines and versions of reality, our free will consent needs to be given over and over again. And none of this is being done consciously or by our own doing. So today I'm going to be talking all about what is known as revelation of the method. And I will be explaining at the end of this video how to counteract this ritual so that we are able to create timelines that are optimal and prosperous. Revelation of the method is a way to extract our free will without us knowing that we are doing so, so that we give our consent in order for us to experience trauma-based mind control. So none of these versions of reality would even be able to be signed off on unless we were in a collective state of trauma. And so because of that, it's called trauma-based mind control is how they're able to do this. So what revelation of the method exactly is, is, is that we are shown images. We are shown through all extensions of media, these events that are going to happen before they actually happen. And that's a way to get them into our subconscious mind and imprint there so that we've already given off our consent to this event happening because those doors have been open for it. And unless we are consciously aware that revelation of the method is being used against us, then we won't even know what's happening. This is because of a hidden law in this universe, and that is no version of reality that's experienced collectively can actually do so without our free will consent. So in order for it to be drawn into reality, we need to have given our consent on some level. And we're not doing this consciously. This demonstrates just how important free will is, even if we don't acknowledge it, and even if we don't know about it. There are still operations governing this universe that adhere to it, even if we don't even claim ours or know about it. So when something is operating, even without us paying attention to it or knowing about it, that is called objective. And so a part of objective reality is, is that you can never revoke your free will. You can get into a lot of karmic debt or consequences for trying to revoke yours or for subverting it or believing that that level of responsibility is only given to others. But regardless of whatever our beliefs are, it is governing us objectively and without our need for its attention. Which is why to the eyes of the universe, there is no such thing as following orders. There are only actions taken from a person's own free will. So the main way that revelation of the method is carried out is through something known as predictive programming. Predictive programming is when we are already infused in the collective consciousness with visuals and images of an event before it's about to play out. And then we're seeing it in one arena in one way and then in similar ways across different avenues of media. So they might not always be able to make a clear connection because they'll be similar but not identical events. It's all to get the essence of this imagery into our collective consciousness. And this is why reality looks so set in stone. It looks like it's on a specific railroad track, if you will. It's because we're so used to this imagery that we're exposed to by the time that something happens that it's like we've been prepared and we've been conditioned for it. And it's because we have. We've already seen these things. And so naturally we see them entered into our reality and we've already accepted it as reality itself. We even scoff at different things that we can't conceive of because it hasn't entered our field yet through predictive programming. So paradigm blindness is also a part of a very heavily conditioned mind. The other avenue for revelation of the method is through repetition. Repetition plays a very strong role in this because we need to have things so normalized to us that by the time we're in that timeline or that event happens, we've already been subconsciously aware of it and expecting it. And that's done through repetition. This is why you see in the media certain phrases said over and over and over again and certain sound bites taken and sensationalized. They need to have our minds strongly prepared for these experiences and events and that's done through repetition and through strong imagery. This is how they bypass our conscious mind 
and get consent through our subconscious. And our subconscious is really the one who's running the show because the subconscious mind is tenfold more powerful than the conscious mind. This has already been proven and some people have even calibrated the subconscious mind to be a trillion times more stronger than the conscious mind. So they reveal to us what they are going to do and then they enhance that with the imagery and the sensational speech and all of the repetition of these things going on within our collective world stage. By the time revelation of the method has been drawn into manifestation, we are experiencing what's known the state of shock. Now, shock can be used for very beneficial and positive means, and it can be used for very detrimental and negative means. The positive means are mainly used in esotericism and mysticism as ways to activate higher consciousness and deeper awareness. The ways that shock is instrumentally used in our collective conditioning, however, is its own completely opposite end of that spectrum. And that's when we're seeing now what we were already shown through the violent imagery now drawn into reality as certain events. And that puts us in the state of shock collectively. This is through violence. This is through violent imagery. This is through a lot of fear-based reporting and fear-based media anything to sensationalize us to get us stunned and in the state of shock because once we're in that state in a negatively prepared way what they're able to do now is to bypass our conscious mind and to go straight into the motherboard of our experience which is the subconscious so they're preparing the subconscious every step of the way they're doing it first through telling us what they're about to do they can do this even through comedical means it doesn't have to be straight up telling us what they're going to do it can be done any manner of way. The rules here that we're working with are very, very thin because they have to honor our free will, but to like the bare minimum of that degree. So it can be even be bypassed as a joke. It can come off as something that's said in an article and at least it was thrown out there into the ether, into the worldwide collective memory. So as long as they're able to say it, it do, it's not up to them if we believe it or not. It's not up to them for anything else because their part of the responsibility was already upheld. They did the revelation, they revealed to us the method, and then their hands are clean from a universal perspective and from a karmic perspective. That's how they bypass karmic means. And so this is how tricky of a situation and challenging of a dilemma humanity is in because we're talking about free will, but free will to the ultimate max, meaning that anything in between there, it can be curved so much that it can almost look like it's completely revoked. And so this is why we have to become conscious and aware of all of this. It's because until we understand just how important our free will is, we're going to continue to, by default, submit our own consent to these agendas. Knowing that there's an objective reality that this is adhering to tells us the importance of being able to become aware of it and align with it because it's being used against us. And that objectivity in this case is, is that energy flows where attention goes and energy flows to create intention and funnel it into where it goes. And our collective consciousness is constantly being misdirected, redirected, and focused into specific timelines. Out of all of the possible timelines that you can imagine, ours get reduced and then reduced even more until it's focused into specific outcomes that are predetermined and already pre-designed, and they're not necessarily at all the most optimal. In fact, they're the ones that are the most programmed, trauma-inducing, and enslaved. This is also where our empathy gets turned and used against us. And this doesn't mean we need to disconnect from our empathy, not at all. What this means is, is that we have to become aware of how our humanness and our empathy is actually being used against us in order for us to see violent imagery, become shocked, and then react in a way where there's already a solution. They create a problem to create a reaction in order to get us, move us into a solution. And that solution is already predetermined by them. So unless we become aware of this and understand where we are being manipulated and we are not using our free will, to see events clearly into this dialectic. It's called the Hegelian dialectic. So it's just a theorem that is being played over and over again. 
just to condition us into these timelines. So we're constantly mistaking reality for just trauma-based versions of reality. And it's done through our, one, our ability to not recognize revelation of the method and predictive programming. And then two, going by default into this theorem, into this dialectic of problem, reaction, solution, so that we're not even using our free will, using our mental capabilities, using our ability for higher consciousness to awaken to this whole manipulation. So the best way that I can illustrate revelation of the method is that scene from Hocus Pocus where the witches say, I put a spell on you, and then the crowd just laughs. Well, them saying I put a spell on you is revealing the method that they're about to do in order for the spell to even be accepted and then therefore cast. And that's what's happening on Earth every single day. We're just essentially laughing at everything that's being told to us because it's not being done in like a super serious way. But let's be honest, at this point we could just hear it and a person could be like, no you guys, seriously, I'm really saying this. And people would still at this point just like not even care. They're so numbed out from their own free will and from their own consciousness. And that's why the most important way to counteract revelation of the method is by first becoming aware that this is even being done in the first place. Because awareness alone is going to raise our frequency enough to start building this guard, this uh, defense shield against it. The second step in counteracting revelation of the method is through healing. Because this is all able to be done because we're in a traumatized state of being. And when we're in a traumatized state of being, we're in a schism. We're in fragmentation. In order to learn more about exactly what I mean by we're in a state of fragmentation, you can watch my video specifically on this titled Soul Loss. What is Soul Loss? So we need to understand the importance of healing and embarking on a healing journey through this in order to bring the internal unity and bring the internal cohesion that's required in order for us to raise our frequency above the level of reality that is using our mass consciousness to focus on specific timelines and therefore create them. This is the hidden reason why shadow work is so important. It's because there's a law in this universe that is not well known. And that is whatever you are not aware of can be used against you in the court of this universe. And shadow work is the medium that we use in order to become aware of how we are operating unbeknownst to ourselves. Because becoming aware of something means that it can no longer be used against you, which is why there's a vested interest for humanity to stay emotionally stunted. The third step in counteracting revelation of the method is by stepping into our sovereignty and declaring otherwise. So declarations are very important when it comes to this because declarations set our authority and speak into reality through the vibration of our voice what we will be experiencing instead. And this is done also through our conscious actions. So stepping into our sovereignty in all areas and dimensions of our being. Declaring what you will experience and what you will not experience is very important in this. And so there's a popular declaration known as, I do not consent. Now I very much resonate with that saying, I do not consent. But the problem with I do not consent is when we voice it, but our actions still show that we are in consent. This is no different than like if we're riding a bicycle, but then we're declaring, I am not riding a bicycle. Well, at that point, it doesn't really matter what we're saying because the actions we're taking are that of riding a bicycle. And so a lot of the times when we're saying, I do not consent, what we're actually doing is still with our actions, believing in certain controlled opposition dynamics or believing in certain paradigms or programming that are still at that same level of reality. And so in that way, we're still giving our energy, our focus, our beliefs, our attention to it, just probably another aspect or another polarity of that same experience. And so because of that, our actions are not congruent. They're not actually reflecting what we're saying. And in that case, that's when declarations are futile. They're, they're, not ener they're energetically weak. They don't mean anything at that point because our actions are overpowering them. But when we're able to say something and declare it and our actions are in alignment and congruent with that, that is when we're stepping into our sovereignty. Because in sovereignty, we're not in the mode of hypocrisy. We're not divided. We're in eternal unity. Our words match our actions, match our beliefs, match our feelings. Which is why to even be able to have healed all of this cognitive dissonance to get to the third step, which is stepping into our sovereignty, the second step, which is healing, has need to have already occurred. 
because by the time we've already stepped into our spiritual sovereignty, we don't have cognitive dissonance running the show. And so when we're in this phase of counteracting revelation of the method, we're able to declare, I do not consent and actually have it ripple into the ethers and impact the field because we're coming from our sovereignty. And everything is designed to make us believe that we don't have sovereignty and still at the same time try to get with our own free will us to consent on something because that's how powerful our sovereignty is. Now declarations are very important and so are intentions, but intentions are different and they need to be done in a different way in order for them to be powerful. And so if you would like me to do a video explaining what intentions are, what their esoteric meaning is, and how to carry them out successfully, let me know in the comments and I will make a video all about the true meaning and power of intentions. So when you find yourself experiencing something that is revelation of the method, rather than get disempowered and go into a state of futility, because that's what they want. They want us to go into a state of powerlessness and drop into a fear vibration because at that point, we are so powerless. We feel that everything is already inevitable. Reality is already set in stone. There's nothing we can do about it. And that's exactly what they're banking on. They need you to believe that everything is inevitable. Everything has already been said and done and that you're just gonna sit there and watch it all play out. And that's another way of revoking our free will because that's not how this works at all. Timelines are a dime a dozen. And so when we're coordinating with them, giving our fear into all of these different events and different things that we're worried are gonna come and be drawn into manifestation and specifically certain portals being open on certain days, all of these things are actually feeding those events and they needed to be entered and introduced into our collective consciousness in order for these portals to be open. And so what's important for us to know is, is that any portal, whether it's a very benevolent and powerful one, we can allow to be open. And any portal that's being used in a negative manner in order to introduce and carry out and generate negative timelines don't need to be open because that experience does not have our free will consent because we specifically said from our conscious authority, I do not consent. And so when we're seeing things play out in reality, the most important thing for us to be able to do is look at it from the tables turned. Rather than drop into fear, rather than drop into paralysis and powerlessness, we go into empowerment. We do the complete opposite. Whatever response they want predetermined to carry out that solution, that predetermined outcome, we do the complete opposite. We become unpredictable. We look at events now through the lens of revelation of the method. Oh, I will not give my power to that. I declare this instead and imprint your declaration onto the field. You can imprint humanity is on the most optimal timeline into the field anytime you see something that is trying to show you to prove to you otherwise. None of this is spiritual bypassing because to even get to this stage of spiritual sovereignty, you have already gone through the shadows. You've already gone through healing. So none of this is coming from a place of cognitive dissonance. This is coming from a place of awakened self-aware empowerment and that energy field is completely opposite. It's nothing compared to an energy field that's in the state of denial and spiritual bypassing. They're just completely different points of focus. So you don't have to worry about any of this being labeled into the category of spiritual bypassing because it's not. So if revealing of the method has taught us anything, it's actually by teaching us the power of our own free will and the great lengths and elaborate settings that have to occur in order for us to get our free will extracted and sign off and consent to versions of reality that are not for humanity's well-being. I hope this has truly allowed you to understand the power of your own free will. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakenings. See you next time.